Welcome back to the John Mandola Show here in WILK. 10, 28 in the morning, Penn State football next week. That's going to be a 12 o'clock start. So uh, in case you're uh, trying to get in football mode for college, that'll be next week as we continue the conversation with the Coughlin Crusaders and uh, getting back in, in some of the stories. Let's uh, welcome in a couple other guys. we get Bucky Greeley here in this segment, Bob <laughs> Anthony with us uh, here, Johnny Joseph, Andy Cool. So great stories. And uh, uh, Andy, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, – Memories of Bucky Greeley and, and, and the story you had uh, meeting this kid in junior high and, and take us back to that, and then we'll we'll hear from Bucky and get his version of it. Yeah, that was uh, probably one of the, the best uh, best times meeting Bucky as a, a young man. You know, uh, the uh, certainly the potential was there. Uh, he was uh, a little bit wider than he was tall at the time, and uh, we figured we could stretch him out. But uh, probably the most coachable young man that I had ever worked with. He uh, took everything in like a sponge, never backed down from any challenge, and, and really came on to be just a great leader and a, obviously the great athlete that he became. And, uh, of course, you, you throw a dart at the dartboard so many times, and you coach hundreds of kids, and I think we could relate to this as an educator or a coach. Um, not everyone is going to believe everything you say. I think Bucky believed just about anything you would tell him. Yeah, you know, it, the kind of thing that, that you, you're able to develop a, a great re- relationship with, with a young man like that. And then and I think that's just a, a compliment to his, his family, fine, fine, fine people uh, that, that just raised such a, a good kid. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's wonderful to see him and, and see now uh, the great daddy is and, and the great leader in, in, in his community. And it, it's a, a great success story. Johnny Joseph, for you, memories of uh, seeing Andy and, and, and Bucky Greeley and, and how they kind of hit it off. And, and then, of course, you're, you're managing the whole group of everybody there. Well, it, what was unique about the situation, uh, Andy was such such a positive influence on Bucky. Not that he needed it by any means. He's from a great family. He was always a great kid. I, uh, I When I started teaching, I taught elementary uh, phys ed and uh i had bucky in class and i knew then that this kid was a special kid he was a big star of the little league and hitting home runs and stuff like that so he just knew his potential was was not even tapped yet he knew that somebody like andy cool came, comes about and really brings it all out in him so it was a very successful story and of course uh, bucky uh <coughs> went on to do great things so let's welcome in bucky greeley here on the john mandola show good morning hey good morning john thanks for having me in well, um when we talked last night you said we were going to tell true stories that's i got these two over here <laughs> Re- revisionist history <laughs> he's so, yeah uh, Co- coach cool yeah coach cool would tell me everything i would listen to everything and then audrey would have to tell me what i could believe and what i <laughs> and what i needed to forget <laughs> What uh, what were your memories there as a, a young, impressionable kid? Of course, you had an older brother at the time. He was an athlete, a uh, younger brother. So uh, talk about the sports was a big part, and baseball a big part of your life, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, baseball was our, our family's game. Um, my grandfather, my father, loved it. He still loves it. He's probably, uh, once he's done listening to this, he's going to try to find the uh, Yankees pregame on the radio. Um, but, yeah, I, I never thought of playing football, and I couldn't have found the best – you know, a better coach than Coach Cool. And I was telling people last night um, down at Patty's, if if it wasn't for that guy right across the table from me, I don't play football. I, I'm I'm that I'm that I'm the kid that uh, Coach Joe was talking about, North End Little League, hit a hit hit some home runs, good baseball player. But I would I would have never stepped on the football field, or for that point, they bring Dave Cole into it. I might not have ever got on a wrestling mat either. And of course, uh, yeah, you really had a successful career in many things that you did. Uh, talk about uh, baseball being number three probably when it all uh, ended, huh? Well, in my heart, number one. <laughs> in my heart, number one. But, yeah, um, the way it ended up, um, you know, there's there's not a, a place for too many 280-pound catchers um, who can't run worth a lick. So it was it was a pretty easy transition to the, to the, base, uh, to the football field from there. Bob Anthony with us, another assistant coach uh, here uh, with Coughlin. And, uh, Bob, uh, memories of Bucky Greeley back in the day? Oh, Bucky was just a, uh, a super kid, uh, along with all the other ones. That Is this an had. intervention? <laughs> 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 this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> but what we remember most, uh, probably about Bucky, is just, uh, uh, and he was, he was a sponge, he would do whatever. Uh, I just remember uh, Bucky at uh, break time. 
and uh, we'd ask, uh, what kind of Gatorade do you want today, guys? And the coaches would say, give us some of that fruit punch. Bucky and fruit punch Gatorade didn't go along very well. In fact, when we did Hills later, uh, uh, we'll, we'll let that slide. But, uh, <laughs> but, but Bucky uh, would always listen to Coach uh, uh, Cool. And then he'd look over at me and just kind of like roll his eyes a little like, okay, all right, all right. Uh, but we, they had a great relationship. We all did uh, with, with Bucky and, and all the kids who, uh, who played at Coughlin. It was just a tremendous experience, a uh, lifelong uh, experience for all of us. Absolutely. The red Gatorade is still true. Um, my, my son will go into the cooler at a baseball game and pull out two, and he's like, the red one's for me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Bucky, you, you, when you when you got to high school, and uh, talk about when when you really got kind of hooked on on wrestling. Uh, how long did it take with that? And then the same with with football, where, where people started noticing this kid. Well, wrestling. I always loved wrestling, and I did it through the uh, you know Coughlin back then had the elementary program that was started. Coach Joe was it fourth graded? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade at at Flood. We would go down to the Coughlin wrestling room. Um, I think it was. 10 or 9 or 10 till 12 every Saturday uh, morning uh, through the season. So I, I loved it. And then, you know, I got up to um, I got up to Plains and Coach Cool was uh, my first junior high wrestling coach. And, you know, he was pretty um, spot on when he said I was probably as wide as I was tall. Um, so, you know, my weight class, I may not have had the strength to wrestle the weight I was. Um, but I still loved it, and you know, as as I grew, and um, well, somebody, will, some people will question this next word, and matured. <laughs> um, you know, it, it just start, it really started clicking um, the leverage and understanding of the sport. And then uh, it was my freshman year where uh, coach brought in his brother Dave, and he um, he taught me some of the um, more how to think and more how to use my. You know, my body, use what I had, I guess, would be a, a better way of uh, describing it. And then just following up when I got to uh, Coughlin, and I, I wish he was here today, is uh, uh, Coach Balaam and Coach Keen. Um, I wrestled Coach Keen every day for two hours for three years straight. Um, that guy, <laughs> I remember my, my senior year, he actually put weight on. To, uh, to make sure to make sure we he could practice uh, with me, um, and, and you know you know he's he's body beautiful. So he, the fact that he had to buy bigger <laughs> jeans wasn't a w- 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 didn't go over real well. But yeah, I mean we just and we're talking about it. And you mentioned it before, John. We were lucky to have the coaches we did. Um, the time they spent with us, um, it, it's 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 unbelievable. And I, I was up the field house uh, yesterday, and you know the, the the flood of memories come in and. You know, I'm seeing Nino over here. He's pulling up, you know, bringing in bananas and and oranges and and snacks for the kids. And it's just that's that's it. It's Coughlin's a family, and that's why I'm here. I want to. I want. It's a family reunion, not a Coughlin football reunion. It's a family reunion. Absolutely, and uh, great memories last night <clears throat> at uh, at uh, Patty's. Uh, everybody got to to say hello and enjoy itself. And uh, Bucky uh, took care of everybody last night. And uh, thank you so much. So we'll get back. We'll talk more Coughlin football. Still got uh, a little bit more with these guys. We'll talk with uh, a couple of other guys in the 90s. Kevin Coyne going to join us. Matt Winsick, two guys are very good on the football field and good off the field as well. Great uh, great people in the community, that's for sure. It's 1036 here at WYLK. We'll take a time out. We'll tell you more locations. Pick up a copy of our football preview magazine. You can grab one at Sheehan's Pharmacy there in Plains. Uh, thank our friends at uh, Saparito, Falcone, and Watt Law. Also, Dr. Pat Adnizio, Mechanical Services, Valley Garment Care, Danko's, Joe Masher Training, What in the Sam Hills Pizza, Hilton Garden Inn, Shooting Stars, Jonathan Comets, Attorney, Dr. Bernard France, and Attorney Joe Blazosic, located there in West Pittston. We come back, we'll talk more Coughlin football, a football reunion of family, if you will. As, uh, we'll head out now to our local state farm insurance agent, Michael Griffin. Break like a good neighbor. Michael Griffith is there. We'll be back at WILK.